I thought I'd discuss the episodes one after the other, just me. Uh, for the bigger podcast discussions, it will be me, Emily and Chris, but I thought I'd just do like uh, my view of the episode sort of thing. So we're starting at the beginning, Big Brother. This is where you see Dell, Rodney and Grandad for the first time. At the beginning of the episode, you have Grandad talking about an Emperor Burger. We have no idea what an Emperor Burger is, do we? We never find out, sadly, but it sounds Chinese or Japanese to me. It's all the same as Dell says. Um, but we never find out, do we? Your dad always said that one day Dell Boy would reach the top. There again, he used to say that one day Millwall would win the cup. <laughs> But it's interesting the family dynamics because Dell, yes, he's Rodney's brother, but he's also sort of a mother and father to him as it uh, comes out later. Because obviously, Dell's dad left them when he was re really young, Rodney, and also their mum passed away. So Dell had to raise Rodney. And it's funny what he says. He's like, I could n never get your oyster milk stains. Off of my Ben Sherman's, I used to find rusks in my hush puppies. Yeah, <laughs> it's a very good first episode because you get to understand the dynamics and it's very funny. It involves English vinyl suitcases that Dell has bought from Trigger, but the catch is that no sod can open them because the combination for the suitcases, um, the briefcases rather, is in the briefcase. So you can't find out the combination. I think Rodney says it, they can only be opened by uh, pro safe crackers. Yeah. Why do they call him Trigger? Does he carry a gun? No, it's because he looks like a horse. <laughs> Wait, Rodgers, what do you think of this? Infradig, in it, eh? It's plastic. Plastic. Old English vinyl. <laughs> <laughs> Combination locks. Yeah, dinky little handle, I don't know. Might be able to push some of them around the old squash clubs, eh? Which Shouldn't is... have anything to do with them, Del. Police most probably looking for them right now. <laughs> Tell us the truth. How the police looking for these things, Trick? No, they're not, Del. And that's the truth. Why are you hiding it under the table, then? Well, because you never know when they're going to start looking for them, do you? Shh, <laughs> stum. <laughs> so, you understand straight away that Del is into wheeling and dealing, and it Hardly ever goes right, does it, for Del Boy? I mean, it never goes right, really, does it, unfortunately? He tries, I think, some of the funniest ones that he's got down the market, probably the cats that play How Much Is That Doggy in the Window has to be one of them, definitely. There's so many. I like the Trotters Crash Turbans. They were funny. There's so many you could mention. I like the um, the paint stripper that he gives to Mike at the nag's head, yeah. <laughs> and he ends up at A&E, doesn't he? Brilliant. This is also a general discussion about Only Fools and Horses as well. I mean, I will divulge because I'm talking about each episode, but I'm also talking about other stuff regarding Only Fools and Horses. And this is the first time in Only Fools and Horses that the Dave joke is made. I'm wearing Trigger's hat, aren't I? Where's my dolphin from Margate from the Jolly Boys outing? Uh, one of the best episodes for sure. Yeah, the Dave joke was made in the first episode, Brother, Big Brother. And um, it wasn't necessarily got by the audience. But that's because it was one that took a little while to grow. But once it did grow, there was no stopping it, was there? And it's such a... It's kind of a cultural phenomenon, isn't it? If you say, all right, Dave, everybody knows what you're talking about. And it's a brilliant joke, isn't it, that Trigger doesn't get Rodney's name. It's something very simple, but at the same time, it's something very funny. Later on, Rodney does question this, doesn't he? He questions the whole, "What? why do you call me Dave? Trig, why do you call me Dave? My name's not Dave. My name's Rodney. I thought it was Dave. <laughs> no, it's Rodney. You sure? He says that to Trigger. And he's like, I thought it was Dave, yeah. <laughs> it's just brilliant, isn't it? And he's like, oh, I'll have to remember that in future. And, and then he calls him Dave straight away after, doesn't he? But there's so many great examples of Trigger calling uh, Rodney Dave. And it grew and grew. But in this first instance, when you see this clip, it's not... You know, people don't get it straight away. How you going, Dave? Rodney also boasts that he's been to um, 
Santa paid, isn't he? Yeah. But um, no, he didn't get that far, did he? He didn't even take his passport. So he was boasting to Dell how far he got on his own. He was trying to prove that he was a man, I think. But um, it didn't really work, did it? Uh, Dell knew what had happened. And yeah, it's quite a funny ending, to be honest. But Rodney also points out about the suitcases. You know, where did they end up? <laughs> yeah. He chucked, him in, he chucked him in the bloody river. Yeah, that's what he did. Chucked a bleeding lot in the river. <laughs> nah. You threw them all in the river? Yep, every last one of them. They floated. That was a bit unforeseen. Probably round in Tilbury about now. <laughs> <laughs> 200 quid down a swanee, eh? Well, in this case, a Thames. <laughs> hmm. Saint-Tropez. <laughs> How far do you really get? Shangri-La Doss House Stunk Newington. <laughs> Shared a room with some cholera cultures. You're <laughs> good. Well, what'd you fancy? Should we go down a pub and act stupid, or should we sail across to Veronica's dad's yacht for Tiffin? No. Best not go to the yacht. Might bump into those bloody briefcases halfway, eh? <laughs> I think it's a very good first episode. There's a lot of good moments. You've got the Emperor Burger, you've got the vinyl uh, briefcases, not suitcases, briefcases. And you've also got uh, Rodney running away, and Grandad um, is very sad about this, isn't he? Dell does look for him everywhere doesn't he but granddad is thinking oh my god what's happening and he's like um did you try interpol and then delboy is like no i'd get more joy out of interflora yeah <laughs> funny um but i think it's a very good first episode in terms of the series like if you look at the first episode so i would say this is one of the best that is the first episode and it's interesting with the first series of only fools and horses that they were actually going to um get rid of the show after the first series that's unbelievable isn't it but apparently there was a strike at the bbc the show got shown at a later time which is what john Ch chalice told me and then it got an audience and that's unbelievable to think isn't it because of all these great episodes since and there's so many people out there, you couldn't imagine your life without any fools and horses because you love the show so much. It's brought laughter to so many people and it still does. And one of the biggest compliments I can give to the show is my mum. She doesn't laugh at anything, but she laughs at only fools and horses. It's obviously a national treasure. 